Well, this Friday, in the life of Jesus, it wouldn't be life changing. It just came through Thursday with his disciples. Thursday night, just right around midnight, he would be betrayed. In Matthew chapter 27, we begin to see the, the accounts of his crucifixion. I want you to remember something. What he went through is not because of what he did, it's because of what we did. He knew no sin, but he came sin, became sin for our hands. Because that's who he is, was, and shall always be for us. He had the kiss of betrayal in Matthew chapter 26. In that same chapter in verse 54, 56, what would happen? All the disciples would walk away. They would run. They were fearful. The crisis he tried to prepare for, they weren't ready for. And understand that. The crisis that we're in, we have been prepared for that. We don't understand it. And you know, tomorrow could be a crisis for some of us that's listening to this right now because some of us are going to find out about friends and loved ones that's got this virus. And we're going to be devastated. We're going to, we're going to hear the news again how many more people have been affected by this virus. We're going to hear the news again about how many people died. And the question I would ask you is, how does that go down in your life? Do you sit there and you kind of are bewildered? I, I, I'm going to tell you what, I believe that's the same feeling that the disciples had when they saw Jesus Christ being cured all by the, the Roman guards. So he would have to go through three trials that are, are with the, this religious trials and three trials that were civil trials. First trial will be at uh, Ananias. The second will be at Kapara. Uh, the other high priest, Caiaphas. And the third one will be before the Sanhedrin. Trumped up charges will be made. Lies will be perpetuated. And they knew that because they were being occupied by the Romans. They could not put him to death. So what they had to do was get the, the authorities of that day, which were the Romans, had to get Pilate on their side. So they carried him to Pilate, trumped him, charged him once again. And, and, and so what happened is that, that Pilate tried to say, well, look, you know, I'm not going to make this decision, so I'm going to see if Herod will make this decision. So he sent him over to Herod. Before he was sent over there, his wife would come to him, Pilate's wife, and say, have nothing to do with this man. This man is innocent. But he didn't listen. Herod sends him back because he didn't find any guilt to him. And so Pilate finally has to make a decision. And the decision was made by other people because he didn't have guts to make the right decision. And so what does he do? You know, that day in custom, he says that they would release one prisoner during this Passover season. And in doing so, that person would be set free. So instead of them setting free Jesus Christ, the religious leadership says, we want Barabbas set free. And then what did they do? Paul says, what do I do with him? They said, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. So Pilate washed his hands and he said, I'm done with this. Remember something, five times he was declared innocent. Three times by Pilate, once by his wife, and once by Herod. But nobody listened. But it was God's will for Jesus to die for us. So they were taken to the Corium Guard. And there he would be, be mocked, spit upon. His back would be scourged. You would be able to see the opening of his back. You could see organs. They'd put a robe on his back. They would build a crown of thorns and put it on his head. Take a, a, a rod and drive those thorns into his head. Rip the, the, the robe off of his back, bow down and mock him, and then put a cross beam on his back for him to go to the, 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 road, the road of Via Della Rosa to go and carry his own cross. And we knew he couldn't do it other way, so they got somebody else to carry it there. And they would lay him down on that cross and drive a nail first into his right hand and second to his left hand and then to his feet. And then they'd put him in the ground.
Jesus would order seven sayings from the cross. The first one would be a, a word of prayer. And his prayer wasn't God to deliver me from this because he already been through that once. His prayer wasn't sick him. His prayer was, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. He was praying for those who put him on the cross. He was, I put him on there. I put him there. My sin put him there. I wasn't there, but my sin put him there. And then the scripture goes on to tell us, and the second thing he would speak in the words, words from the cross, he would have the two thieves. He was hanging between the two thieves. One was mocking him, and one of them says, Surely this must be the Son of, the Son of God. And he wanted to have a relationship. He said, Today you will be with me in paradise. In the Gospel of John, the, the 19th chapter, Jesus Christ would look down from the cross and he would see his mother there and he'd see the Apostle John there and he would say, John, take care of my mama. Somebody's got to take care of her. One thing he said, Woman, behold your son. And she did. And then suddenly, you put it on the cross at 9 o'clock. By now it's noon. Most people died 24 hours later, but he would die in 6 hours. All of a sudden it became dark. And the reason is that he would cry these words, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And at that moment in time and history, a life-changing moment for all of mankind, he became sin for us. Us. He who knew no sin became sin on our behalf. He took my place. That was my cross. That was your cross. And God walked away from him. The, the physical pain was hard and difficult, but what was most important to him was that he was losing his fellowship with the Father because of sin. Not his own, but ours. Shortly after that, after that fourth saying, he would say, his fourth saying would be, I thirst. And I'm going to tell you what I think he thirsts for. Just like at times in our own lives, he was thirsting for fellowship and that sweet communion with God. I believe that. But he couldn't have it anymore because he became sin. Then he would utter those who were tesselestai, it is finished. And I'm going to tell you what was finished. He knew life, his life was leaving, but he knew in dying for us and dying for the sins of the world that sin would be done with to be held against us as a penalty to keep us out of the presence of God. He knew it. And the last thing he said, Father, to thy spirit, I commit my spirit into your hands. He committed himself to the Lord. And then he died. But listen to this. There was a Roman guard there. There was a commander there who looked up and he said, Truly, this must have been the Son of God. Wow. Then he'd be taken off the cross. Placed in a bar to And we'll finish the rest of the story. Father, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Those words aren't adequate enough to say, to let our, our hearts be shared with you, what you've done for us. Lord, thank you that he just didn't die, but he rose again the third day, and we will celebrate together on Sunday. In your son's precious, glorious name we pray.